Hi, Cami here from Flash University, and today we're talking about one of my favorite types of characters. Ready? Today is five tips on how to create a terrifying villain. You ready? Let's jump right in. Okay, so number one is, I've said it before, tropes. Don't just go with the trope because it's the thing that you've seen and you know and it's done. Mm -mm. Pick something else. And what you may not even recognize is that a lot of authors are trying to do what in psychology is called a psychopath. But it's not portrayed accurately because they're trying to copy what they've seen a hundred different times. So don't do that, okay? Pick something different. Now, whether you, whether you say, no, I've got to go with the trope, I'm pretty sure my character needs to be a psychopath, or whether you choose to go a different route with a different personality disorder, which I'll do a video on that later, there are tons of perfect personality disorders for villains that would be fun to play with right so uh, whether you go this way or that way it's really important to do tip number two and that is research um i'm gonna have to go with research again i said it in other videos you're gonna hear me saying it again and again and again the books that resonate with people the most are the big books that are written correctly the books that people don't reread or don't go in for the next book in this series or heaven forbid close it and put it down are the books where the character is doing stuff that the character would never do if the character were real right so um i don't know maybe the bad guy is bad just because he's bad and that's what you think a psychopath looks like which is not the case um, and maybe all of a sudden he does something good or he has this good part of his personality and the reader is thrown by that or maybe there's a situation that happens and the reader says wait a second that was weird when, where did that come from? If you know your research, if you know your personality disorder, that's not gonna be a problem. You've got it once you've researched and it's gonna come across in everything that you write, every word that you choose, every scenario you put that, that character through. They don't get a free pass because they're the villain. They don't get to just skate through the story. If they have a flat arc, which brings me I skipped it brings me to number four if they have a flat arc character arc a character arc is how the character changes throughout the story right so if they have a flat character arc um that's fine but you gotta know what a flat character arc looks like you gotta know and if they have a a negative character arc you know if they start off being more positive and they're the villain by the end you know, if they're jaded by the end, then you've got to know that too. You have to know if, if it's a redemption arc, know that. Put that in place and know what major changes like that, what toll it takes on someone and how those past actions come back to haunt that character, right? Don't just say, they're redeemed, huzzah, we're done. Congratulations, everybody. Don't do that research know what it looks like and write it okay another thing is knowing your character's goals knowing their backstory knowing what makes them get out of bed in the morning a mistake i see in the writing community is assuming that bad guys are just bad or assuming that they want to be bad or they this or they that there's so many assumptions and this is how psychology can help you as a writer because a lot of these assumptions are incorrect okay when we talk about criminology when we talk about how someone behaves when they get caught doing something more often than not 
they don't see themselves as the bad guy. They see themselves as the victim, even when they're the perpetrator, even when they're the one who's hurting people. But my life, this, it's so awful and I'm so broke because everybody, blah, 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 whatever. So I had to break into their house and steal their stuff. Do you see why I had to do this? I had to, okay? So everybody has a goal, a want, a drive, the reason we do the things that we do. We don't just blindly do stuff. We have reasons, right? You eat bananas because you like bananas. You wear those pants because you like how you look in them, right? That's I don't buy pants that I don't like how I look in them, right? So we all have reasons for the things that we do. You have to know that character, okay? And then I already touched on this. Tip number four is the arc, the character arc, okay? So know what different kinds of arcs exist. Know what kind you want for your villain. And then be consistent. So does that mean your character arc, your character arc can't be a redemption arc? No, you can have a redemption arc. Please, I love redemption arcs, right? But that's something that takes time for it to happen. And I've read some books I have where the villain is has an aha moment. They connect with the hero or they they find out they were wrong and whoop, I guess I uproot everything that I've spent my whole life doing. We don't work that way, right? We justify hard. Everybody justifies hard and says, this is why I'm right. This is why I'm good. This is why I fit. This is why I'll be good for that, right? So villains are, are no exception to that. So be consistent in their character arc means it has to be an arc. It's reason it's called an arc, right? It happens over a period of time. And if you want it to be, um, if you want it to be a surprise to your reader, that's fine. But you have to know that in the beginning and you have to make promises throughout that are going to show your readers that something's not quite right. Something, mm, they'll feel it in their gut, right? They will feel that that um, something's going to happen because plot twists have hints throughout and the best plot twists have those kind of hints that you don't recognize until after you've read it and then you go back and you say wow I don't know how I didn't see this right a movie comes to mind on this one Sixth Sense if you've ever seen Sixth Sense if you've never seen it there's an affiliate link below, which means you pay the same price, but I get a commission to keep making these videos. Uh, check it out because in the end, you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. And you go back and you rewatch and you're like, oh, okay. I see this and this and this. You see all the things that you didn't see the first time around. Still a plot twist. But those are the best kinds of plot twists where you're surprised. Okay, now I am so excited to tell you guys that one of my favorite types of villains is actually the stereotype, the, not stereotype, the uh, trope, excuse me. I love psychopaths. I love them. Oh, I love to hate them. I hate to love them. Uh, but I love to watch a psychopath on camera. Make sure you do it right. Otherwise, it doesn't look right. It looks like they're bad just to be bad and they're going to do bad things because they're bad. Don't do that. Don't. I will find you. Don't do it. Um, so then I want to tell you one of my favorite villains, and it also happens to be in a show, not a movie. The BBC's version of Sherlock Holmes. I love Moriarty. In this book, in this movie, this uh, this mini series, rather, um, he is phenomenal. He fits all of the check marks for his personality disorders that he has. Multiple personality disorders that he has. Um, if you want to check it out, if you've never seen it before, there's an affiliate link below. Check it. Um, go ahead and type in the comments below your favorite villain that you have ever read. 
And I want to know. I want to look these books up. I want to see why these villains resonated with you. And I want, I want to read it. I want to get excited about it, right? And also, type in below your favorite kind of arc, your favorite kind of character arc for a villain. Do you love or hate the redemption arc? Do you love a flat villain where they're just, nothing changes them. They are who they are. That's it, right? So comment in below um, your favorites and don't forget to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell so that you can be notified every time I put out a new, a new uh, video. I'll see you soon.